In this video, I play in the largest poker room in the world. With over 270 tables, watch to see how our 5-5 No Limit Hold'em session turns out. If you enjoyed this video or are new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you thought. Let's go! In the first hand of the session, we have 10-8 of clubs and there is an early position limp. We are on the button and this hand is playable enough, but I don't want to limp. I raise to $25. The small blind is the only person to make the call. The flop comes Jack-7-7 seven, seven with two clubs. The small blind checks to us and with a gut shot, a flush draw, and possibly two live cards, we are just going to bet range here. I bet $20 and our opponent makes a call. The turn is the Jack of Hearts. Small blind checks again, and this card is really not so great for us. If I bet here, I'm obviously not going to get a seven or a jack to fold, and probably not even going to get ace high or a smaller pair to fold. For this reason, we just take our equity and check back. The river comes the king of clubs. We now have a flush. If my opponent had any sort of pair, even a small pair, I would expect them to bet here for value, but they don't, they check to us. For this reason, I am going to go for value and target ace high, so I bet $15 into about 95. This works as our opponent makes the call, we show and win. In the next hand, there is an early position limp for $5. We raise on the cutoff to $30 with pocket tens. I size up a bit here as this table was playing very loose, everyone was calling basically any size. The small blind and the big blind both make the call. The flop comes 9, 8, deuce, 2 clubs. Action checks to us and I need to decide what to do. With two loose opponents in this hand, I'm just going to bet and bet for value and protection. Having a 10 on this board and having a club is particularly good. I can turn a straight draw when any seven or jack comes and I can turn a flush draw as well. For this reason, I don't think we have to go too big, so I bet $40. The only call comes from the small blind, who is the same opponent as last hand. The turn is the nine of spades, and there's now about 170 in the pot. This time, the small blind leads for 135. This guy was literally playing any two cards, so I am not too comfortable here. He can definitely have a 9, but my hand is still too strong. I make the call. The river is the queen of hearts. With the pot now at about $440, my opponent puts me all in for about $345. This is really not an easy spot. Having 10s here isn't so great as our opponent is not going to have jack 10 or 10-7 as a bluff. Similarly, having a club is also not so good as our opponent has less clubs as a bluff. The good news is that the turn did bring a spade draw, which obviously obviously missed on the river, and this opponent is just crazy. I've already seen him make some pretty insane plays, so I can't really fold to this guy. I prepare myself for the worst and make the call. My opponent is very slow to show his hand, which means we win! He finally shows 7-6 of clubs for a flopped flush and straight draw. We scoop this over 1k pot. Stay tuned for more antics from this opponent. The next hand is just funny. Per usual, there is an early position limp for $5. I raise on the button to $25 with jack 8 of spades. The small blind, same opponent as the last two hands, makes a call. The big blind calls, and this time, the early position limper back raises to $50. We are about $400 effective, and like I said, this is just funny. I'm not folding for a min raise, I just make the call. The small blind, on the other hand, has other ideas. He back re-raises to 150. Not sure if back re-raise is a real term, but today it is. It folds back to the early position limper who ends up jamming for $400. Obviously, we are not going to get involved here. We make the fold, but the small blind makes a call. This very weird action ends up with the flop coming 10-9-7. RIP to Jack-8 as we would have flopped the nuts. To conclude this weird hand, the small blind ends up showing pocket aces and the early position player mucks. Let me know if you guys like seeing really random and weird hands like this one that I'm not actually totally involved in. I thought it was pretty amusing. In the next hand, we have King Queen of Hearts, a beautiful hand, and we raise to $20 under the gun one. The small blind, the same player that got sacked last hand, is the only one to make the call. The flop comes 10 9 9 with one heart. With about $40 in the pot, I'm just going to range bet here as there are a ton of good turn cards like any heart, any jack, any king, or queen. I bet small, $15. Small blind ends up check raising to $30. Can't fold for this price, we make the call. The turn is a six of hearts. The small blind started off this hand with only $170. At this point, he has about a pot size bet and ends up going all in for $110. With even more outs now with a flush shawl and our king or queen probably being alive, I go ahead and make the call. The river is no help, it's the four of diamonds. My opponent shows jack 10 off. 
We lose this one to top pair. It is what it is. In the next hand, I have king nine of diamonds and I raise under the gun to $25. I size up here as someone has just gotten back and is already in for $5. This does not deter anyone as three people end up making the call. The flop comes ace, four, deuce, all diamonds. We flop the absolute nuts in a multi-way pot with some loose opponents. Being that it is so easy to get called at this table, I am not going to slow play this. I go ahead and bet small $30 into 100. An early position player makes a call and so does the hijack. The turn is the king of hearts. I continue and bet $85. This time, just the hijack makes a call. The river comes the king of clubs. I'm really not concerned at all about my opponent having a set. They have about $200 behind at this point and there's $330 in the pot. In hopes that my opponent just has an ace for flopped top pair, I go ahead and bet small $100. Unfortunately, this does not squeak out any last extra value. My opponent makes the fold and it is clear we maybe should have even gone smaller. In general, I recommend not trying to get too fancy and just bet when you have a good hand like I did in this case. Happy to get as much value as we did. At this point in the night, the whale from our earlier hands begins to fall asleep at the table and is no longer providing as much action as he previously did. Hi, sir. Hey, good. sir. Going as far as having to be woken up by the dealer, this player was slowing the game down. I eventually change tables and get a very warm welcome by Pocket Kings. The under the gun player limps for $5. We raise to $25 under the gun one and the button calls. The big blind ends up squeezing for 120. Being that we are about $400 effective to start this hand, can't really do anything here but basically min, four bet, or jam. I wouldn't mind just calling if I had pocket aces, but with the button in this hand as well, we certainly can't let them see a flop. The limper folds as they do, and we end up 4-betting to 260. The button has a huge stack and looks like he's in a ton of pain to fold his hand, but eventually does. The big blind, however, thinks it over and eventually makes the call. The flop comes jack, five, three, two clubs. At this point, the SBR is super low and we have one move when it checks to us. All in. We go all in for our opponent's remaining $110. Our opponent makes a call. The turn is the six of spades and the river is the deuce of diamonds. Only concern here is pocket jacks, but that is not what they have as they show pocket queens. Nice little cooler here to start off at this new table. Next up, I have jack 10 of diamonds and there are a couple early position limps for $5. I raise an early position to $30 and both of these limpers make the call. The flop comes jack six, four. It checks to us and I'm going to put in a C bet for value. I bet $35 and only the under the gun one player makes the call. The turn is the ace of spades. This time my opponent decides to lead for $60. There's about 160 in the pot, not really sure what this means, don't think my opponent has an ace, but don't see much reason to raise, so I just make the call. The river is reassuring, as we see the jack of hearts. We now have trips, and if our opponent has an ace, they are no longer ahead. This time they decide to check. With almost $300 in the pot, and my opponent only having $200 left behind, I am going all in. All in. I am really hoping they have an ace and will just have to make the call, but unfortunately they end up folding. They either had complete air and decided to try to bluff on the ace as if they hit the ace, or they may have had a draw like spades on the turn that didn't turn out so well. So far things are going pretty well at this new table, but let's see what happens in this next hand. I have pocket sevens and there are a couple of early position limps and I raised to $35 in early position. The button makes a call in the small blind 3 bets to 105. The limpers fold and action comes back to us. This is a really small 3 bet out of position versus multiple opponents. We are pretty deep, about 1k effective, and if I hit a set here, I am going to get all of the money. For these reasons and being in position, I make the call. The button folds and the flop comes queen 3-3, three, three, 2 diamonds. This is not such a bad flop for us, but when the small blind checks, I don't really see much reason to bet here, we want to pot control, we check back. The turn is a four of diamonds. Once again, the small blind checks. At this point, it feels like my opponent has ace king. They should be betting a lot of other hands here. With that said, they have been pretty tight since I've been at this table, so I am not going to bet. I check. The river is the six of spades. With about $250 in the pot, this time my opponent bets $100. With the way this hand is played out, I don't really think we can make the fold here, so I make the call. We get shown pocket aces. I was not expecting that. Nice hand. 
In the next hand, there is an under the gun raise to $25. I call on the hijack with ace, eight of spades, and the cutoff and the big blind both make the call as well. The flop comes eight, six, three, two clubs. With $100 already in the pot, the original raiser bets $60. With top pair, top kicker here, I can't go anywhere quite yet. I make the call. Everyone else folds, and the turn is the six of spades. The under the gun player is not slowing down. They bet 110. This is half pot, and for this size, once again, I don't think we can fold. I make the call. The river is a three of diamonds. There is almost $500 in the pot, and this time my opponent checks. I'm really hoping at this point they had something like clubs and decided to bet bet and give up on the river. This is not the case as we check back and my opponent has pocket nines. Pretty annoying hand where I ended up losing a decent amount in spots where I just don't think I should be folding, but are also just spots that are never bluffed. We see more of this opponent in the next hand as I'm in the small blind with ace deuce of diamonds. The cutoff raises to $20. We shouldn't have much of a calling range at all in the small blind and I really don't feel like folding this hand so I decide to 3 bet to $80. My opponent makes the call. The flop comes ace, seven, four, all clubs. I decide to range bet and bet small for $50. My opponent makes the call. The turn is the six of diamonds. Being that we have the worst possible ace in the deck and no club, I want to slow down and pot control here so I check. This time my opponent bets 160. This is really annoying, but they can still have some bluffs here like a club and we still do have top pair, so we make the call. The river is a seven of hearts. I check and this time my opponent checks back. I show my hand with a sliver of hope that we are still good, but unfortunately we get shown ace jack off. Once again, I get into a very annoying spot with an opponent where I just can't fold, but where they are also just never bluffing. Next up, I have ace queen off under the gun and I raise to $20. UTG one calls in the big blind three bets to $80. This is a new player and she sat down with about $300. In general, I should just be folding this, but I was counting on my opponent making a mistake post flop and I want to try to make this money back that I just lost, so I end up calling. It's a pretty loose call. The player to my left also makes a call and we are going three ways to a flop that comes queen, six, deuce. The big line starts off by checking. I could certainly bet here, but with an opponent to my left as well, I decide to pot control and just check. This player ends up checking back and we are going to a turn that comes at eight of spades. There's about 240 in the pot and this time the big blind bets $60. This size in particular is quite weak. There is a flush draw on board and an opponent left to act behind us. So for this reason, I decide to raise to 130. The player to my direct left makes a fold and action is on the big blind. They think about it for a while and end up going all in for about 220 total. Obviously, it was always my intention to get all in with top pair top kicker here. If they have me beat with aces or kings, congrats. I make the call and the river comes the eight of clubs. My opponent shows ace king of clubs. Not sure exactly what they were thinking when they bet the turn and consequently jammed all in. Turns out checking on this flop worked quite well. Some people just can't let go of ace king. In the next hand, there is an early position limp for $5. The small blind checks and we raise to $35 with king queen off. Both players make the call. The flop comes jack eight deuce with two hearts. The small blind checks and being that we have two overs and a lot of good turn cards, I decide to bet. I bet $40. Just the early position player makes the call. The turn comes the king of hearts. This is one of those good turn cards, but the flush draw does complete. So we do have to kind of be careful. I check and this time my opponent bets 120. With top pair here, nothing to do but make the call. The river comes the four of diamonds. I check again and this time my opponent checks back. I show my hand and we end up being good. I'm thinking they most likely had a heart like the ace of hearts and decided to bet on the turn, but didn't pull the trigger on the river. Nice to make back some money since losing from earlier. In the very last hand of the night, we have jack 10 of clubs and there is an under the gun raise to $20. UTG one and UTG two call. I'm sitting in the hijack and this seems like a pretty great spot to three bet. I wanna take this dead money and if I get called, our hand definitely has some playability post flop. I make it 120 and to my surprise, the cutoff cold calls and the under the gun two player cold calls. The flop comes ace, ace, king. The early position player checks to us. Both of these players had about $300 to start this hand. With almost $400 in the pot, I'm just going to bet and hope these guys fold. And if not, we still have a gut shot and backdoor clubs. I bet small, $85. The cutoff goes all in for about 180 total. 
The early position player folds, and obviously with as much money we've invested at this point, we can't make the fold we call. Let's see a run out. The turn is glorious. The queen of spades. The river is the eight of clubs, and I'm thinking we have this one on lock. But boy, am I wrong, as we see the cutoff turn over ace king. They cold called ace king of hearts and ended up just flopping the world. I definitely should have considered just how tight this guy's cold calling range is, but otherwise can't really do much here considering these stack sizes. Time to cash out and book a win while we're still ahead. We were in this session for $500 total and out for 820. That's a profit of $220. As you saw, it started off really well at that crazy table and then slowly went downhill as we lost some pots that were kind of iffy and then got it back there at the end. If you enjoyed the video, as a reminder, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 5K subscribers before the end of the year. Let's make it happen. Thanks for watching.